Academy presents What is Neurodiversity? Neurodiversity is the diversity of human minds, the infinite variation in neurocognitive functioning within our species. There's an awful lot of scientific evidence that shows quite plainly that there's considerable variation among human brains, and if we all thought alike, the world would be a very different place indeed. The neurodiversity paradigm is a specific perspective on neurodiversity, a perspective or approach that boils down to these fundamental principles. Number one, neurodiversity is a natural and valuable form of human diversity. Number two, the idea that there is one normal or healthy type of brain or mind or one right style of neurocognitive functioning is a culturally constructed fiction, no more valid and no more conducive to a healthy society or to the overall well-being of humanity than the idea that there is one normal or right ethnicity, gender or culture. Number three, the social dynamics that manifest in regard to neurodiversity are similar to the social dynamics that manifest in regard to other forms of human diversity. For example, the diversity of ethnicity, gender or culture. These include the dynamics of social power inequalities and also the dynamics by which diversity when embraced, acts as a source of creative potential. And an example of correct usage would be those who have embraced the neurodiversity paradigm and who truly understand it do not use pathologising terms like disorder to describe minority neurological variants like autism. The term neurodivergent, or ND, refers to having a brain that functions in ways that diverge significantly from the dominant societal standards of normal. I myself describe how the ND paradigm is a social model and is used to describe how people whose behaviours, ways of being in and interacting with the world that society currently deems acceptable as the social norms can be considered today's neurotypical. Conversely, people whose behaviours and interactions with the world that are currently deemed unacceptable are today's neurodivergent. Neurodivergent itself is quite a broad term and so neurodivergence, the state of being neurodivergent, can be largely or entirely genetic and innate, or it can be largely or entirely produced by brain-altering experience, or some combination of the two. Autism and dyslexia are examples of innate forms of neurodivergence, while alterations in brain functioning caused by such things as trauma is an example of a form of neurodivergence produced through experience. Some forms of innate or largely innate neurodivergence, like autism, are intrinsic and pervasive factors in an individual's psyche, personality and fundamental way of relating to the world. The neurodiversity paradigm rejects the pathologising of such forms of neurodivergence and the neurodiversity movement opposes attempts to get rid of them. The following is an example of correct usage for the word neurodivergent. Our school aims to be inclusive of students who are autistic, dyslexic or otherwise neurodivergent, though there are some types of neurodivergence that we're still seeking ways to accommodate. The word neurotypical, on the other hand, means having a style of neurocognitive functioning that falls within the dominant societal standards of normal. Neurotypical is the opposite of neurodivergent and is the condition from which neurodivergent people diverge. Importantly, neurotypical is not synonymous with non-autistic, as autism is only one of many forms of neurodivergence, so there are many, many people who are neither neurotypical nor autistic. We can also describe a neuro-minority, which is a population of neurodivergent people about whom all of the following are true. Number one, they all share a similar form of neurodivergence. Number two, the form of neurodivergence they share is one of those forms that is largely innate and that is inseparable from who they are, constituting an intrinsic and pervasive factor in their psyches, personalities and fundamental ways of relating to the world. Number three, the form of neurodivergence they share is one to which the neurotypical majority tends to respond with some degree of prejudice, misunderstanding, discrimination and or oppression often facilitated by classifying that form of neurodivergence as a medical pathology. Some examples of neuro-minority groups include autistic, bipolar, dyslexic and voice-hearing people. With this understanding of the terminology, we can see how a neurodiverse group is a group in which multiple neurocognitive styles are represented. 
Thus, a family, the faculty or student body of a school, the population of a town or the cast of characters of a TV show would be neurodiverse if some members had different neurocognitive styles from other members. For instance, if some members were neurotypical and others were autistic. And on the subject of terminology and correct usage, it is important to remember that there is no such thing as a neurodiverse individual. The correct term is neurodivergent individual, because diversity is a property of groups, not of individuals. That's intrinsic to the meaning and proper usage of the term diverse. Groups are diverse, individuals diverge. No human being falls outside of the spectrum of human neurodiversity, just as no human being falls out the spectrum of human racial, ethnic and cultural diversity. You yourself may live in a neurodiverse family, which includes three neurotypicals, two autistics, one person who's bipolar and dyslexic, a cat and a dog. And so to conclude, neurodiversity is a fact, and it is fundamental that people understand the normalcy of diversity, particularly so that we can collectively fight the social inequalities and dynamics that oppress and harm those considered abnormal or disordered, the neuro-minorities in our society. Thank you for listening.